Grounded Switch, Ricky Burnett from Grounded Switch is with us today. Hi, hey, Rick, hi. how you doing? Doing good. Well, I have a little story about that song. Okay. Um, Charlie Daniels had um, cut a rhythm track. You know, he wanted, so they were saying, well, you need a fiddle song. He had that track playing fiddle on it. No words. There was always a uh, pegboard thing, you know, poster board thing in the hallway as you were walking, yeah, as you was walking toward the studio. And they, somebody posted a picture on there and a story about Grinder Switch. And it, the headline of it was, the train for Grinder Switch is running right on time. I'm sure that when he came out and took a break, he saw that. Anyway, ah, yeah, ah, the Tucker's down in Carolina. Yeah, that was. Yes, sir. Rick. <laughs> How about that? And um, Taz that played keyboard with Charlie, they were playing here, and we met up someplace. And at that point, I was doing stuff here at the studio, had keys, and all. I said, you know, I'll take you in, and show you this place, see what you think, and bring back some memory. And uh, we walked by that poster was still hanging up in there. Well, uh, tell me your first memory of of coming to Macon. If you can reach back, you know, first time coming in town. Yeah, coming to Macon. Um, well, it was um, Les Dudak. Um, Les is a really fine guitar player, but we grew up in the same neighborhood in uh, Auburndale, Florida. And he came up here and became friends with Dickie Betts and uh, was recording, um, which one? Oh, Brothers and Sisters album. And, uh, Anyway, uh, he also was friends with Joe Dan and uh, mentioned to Les that he would like to start a band. Joe Dan did. And uh, John, or Les said, well, I've got two guys down in Florida, uh, Larry Howard and Rick Burnett. And uh, Joe Dan called me up and said, would you like to come up here? I'm thinking about starting a band. I thought, yeah, you know. So uh, we jumped in my car one evening and uh, drove up here. And we came down to the studio and went into the, the uh, barber shop over there. And the brothers were recording brothers and sisters that night. They were recording Ramblin' Man, as a matter of fact. But so we went over there and um, Joe Dan did the best he could, you know, with a busted collarbone playing bass. And that was my first day here in Macon, Georgia, right there. And got to see the brothers record Ramblin' Man because Les was, Les, played, um, you know, on the end of the song, da 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 that's less. And uh, that was pretty cool. Pretty eventful first day in town. Yeah, it really yeah. was. Yeah. I remember coming out of the dressing room uh, somewhere on the road with uh, Leonard Skinner, and it was like the stage was here, and there was a big area, and then the Tuckers, or the Skinner was down there, and Grind and Switch's dressing room was over here. And I came out, and I was walking towards Thumper, what's his real name, the bass player? Leon. Leon, yeah. Anyway, he was walking towards me. I went, hey, Thumper, how you doing? And he pulled the gun out. I went, what the hell? And then he shot me with the freaking gun. It was a damn blank gun, but I hit the deck, you know? And I went, you son of a bitch, you know? I started running, he took off, you know? I was so mad, and they eventually took the gun away from him because he was scaring the hell out of people, you know? Um, we were going someplace and Charlie had a scenic cruiser, a Greyhound scenic cruiser. It looks like a bus, and then it has the thing that goes up with the window. Anyway, he had, that was his bus, and you couldn't mess, miss it because uh, nobody had one at that time but Charlie. And we saw it. So we went, oh, let's go see Charlie and see what's going on. So we pulled in, and we walked into the uh, center area where the pool was, and we saw Freddie Edwards, long blonde haired drummer, and he's standing up there. And we walked up, and we went, What's going on, Freddie? And he just went, he didn't say anything. I was like, what the hell? And we looked, and Charlie was peeking out the curtains. He had, and he opened the door, come here, come here, come here, come here. Okay. So anyway, we all go in, and we said, what the hell are you doing? He said, Eddie is a, he's a decoy. He said, these rednecks were making fun of him earlier, telling him he looked like a girl, he said. You guys can help out. He said, when those guys come up here, we're all going to jump out this room and beat the hell out of them. We said, okay, yeah, that's a, that'll be great. <laughs> but he was peeking out the thing. <laughs> First album here, you see Grinder Switch, one right. word. Right. Here we see Grinder Switch, two words. Can you explain? Uh, it's best I can remember. It was supposed to be two words or we thought it was, at least Joe Dan did. He was the one that wanted to call the band Grinder Switch, and we all agreed to it. And Joe Dan was 
head man, you know, he kept us all together. He was the daddy. But um, we went into the Capricorn office downstairs where Bunky's office was to see the first pressing of the album. Because you know, all we'd seen and heard was the white copy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, my God, Joe Dan went ballistic. He went, oh, this is not right. Looks good to me. What's the problem? He said, it says grinder switch. And I went, yeah. He said, nobody's going to know how to even pronounce it. It's supposed to be two words, grinder and switch. They got it all run together. Drew was a great guy. Um, uh, here's another story. Um, we were um, living on Pierce Avenue. Just There was just the three of us, me, Larry, and Joe Dan. And we needed a lead guitar player and somebody that could sing. So... Uh, Joe Dan got the idea that we needed to go, he, me and him, needed to go to Miami and pick up Dickie's motorcycle. And on the way, we would stop in Jacksonville and go around to all these clubs to try to find a lead guitar player that Joe Dan knew. And we went to several of these funky bars in Jacksonville. I mean, I thought we were going to get killed. You know, I had really wild, long hair, and Joe Dan, you know, we were both like, made 90 pounds, you know, we didn't weigh anything. But anyway, um, we drove all the way down there, got the motorcycle and came back. And the guy we were looking for, Drew Lumbar, was asleep on the couch at the house. He had met Larry, had gone down to Grants to see, he didn't know, just to hang out, and met Drew. And told him, hey, you know, come back. And, you know, Joe and he went, that's the guy, that's the guy we're looking for right there. Larry and I grew up pretty much in the same neighborhood. You know, I mentioned Les, and uh, Larry was right there. He played trombone in the school bands, and um, I knew him from that because we played in the Dixieland band, and he played trombone, and I played drum. But then um, I had a band called the United Sounds, and we needed a lead guitar player because we didn't have one. We had a keyboard and bass and drums. We needed a lead guitar player. And uh, Larry had been playing guitar and taught himself how to play Malaguena. And then um, he started really writing more. Even before Grind and Switch was together, um, we lived together and he was writing songs and stuff at that time. Well, we've mentioned Joe Dan a bunch of times, but let's talk about him for a minute. How did you meet Joe Dan Petty? Through Les, um, he introduced us together and all. And Would you say Grinder Switch is kind of uh, his vision of the band he kind of come up with? It? Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the one that had it all planned in his mind, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just kind of rolled with it, you know. And How about Steve Miller? I know he was a little bit later on in Grinder Switch, but I always thought he was a great addition to the band. Well, Judd Ann had run into him, um, and I. Uh, I remember him too playing with Steve, um, not Steve Miller, um, yeah, Elvin Bishop. Bishop is who he played with. And uh, this, we saw him in uh, the warehouse down in New Orleans. And uh, Jodan approached him about, you know, he might be interested in leaving Elvin, you know. He was. Well, uh, life after Grinder Switch, what's that been like for you, Rick? Well, it was. You know, I had gotten married and had kids, and I was gone all the time. And I was, you know, missing my wife, missing seeing the kids grow up. And uh, the band was not doing a whole lot, you know, so I decided to get out. And, uh, you know, it was a rough decision to try to make. You know, after all those years, those guys were more family than you can imagine, you know. We were very tight. We were on the road all the time. and traveling and uh anyway it's just a hard decision and uh i left the band <clears throat> and uh, we still did some shows and stuff together but you know it just kind of drifted apart just in fact probably the only band to break up with a recording contract we had a recording contract at the time but you know we just never did anything more Rick, I want to thank you for coming and being with us today, man. It's a pleasure having you. A true uh, piece of Southern Rock landscape is Rick Burnett, your grinder switch guys, and, and we're glad to have him here.